I recall, as many of you will no doubt recall, that in 1994, Nantelis was handing out to the reps the manuscript of a strange little book about early medieval Irish history. The house had little confidence in it. It was scheduled for an initial laydown of 5,000 copies. But at the sales meeting, reps who had read the manuscript lobbied for a much larger print run and a much larger laydown. The book was titled, How the Irish Saved Civilization and it was the first volume in the Hinges of History series. Many of the elements that made that book into a best-selling phenomenon are present in volume five of the series now titled Mysteries of the Middle Ages. Mysteries of the Middle Ages picks up where How the Irish Saved Civilization left off and takes us on a rollicking tour of the High Middle Ages, the 12th, 13th, and early 14th centuries. The European barbarians, have settled down and become knights and ladies, bakers and candlestick makers, monks and nuns. Though the elegant and brutal world of classical Greece and Rome is long gone, many of the best insights of classical times are being recovered in the manuscripts preserved so lovingly by Irish scribes and others. It is a time of renewal and discovery of new confidence and fresh adventure. Three things especially stand out. First, the central place given to the Madonna and child in art and ritual elevates the position of women throughout Western Europe. In the visibility and importance of great abbesses like Hildegard of Bingen and of great queens like Eleanor of Aquitaine, we can trace the first stirrings of feminism. Second, thanks to Thomas Aquinas, reason regains its preeminence. And this new freedom of mind leads directly to a renewed appreciation for the importance of science. Already in the 13th century, scientists are working throughout Western Europe, building laboratories, conducting experiments, testing hypotheses. But what is sometimes thought to have been a period of intellectual decay was actually a renaissance of new learning. Third, Art turns realistic. In the work of the great Florentine painter Giotto, we see for the first time an attempt to create a third dimension, perspective, and a depth of human emotion not attempted since the heyday of classical art. The truth of the matter is that the emotions in the faces of Giotto's figures go deeper than classical art had ever managed to go. In Dante's poetry, the new realism is even connected to an uncanny spiritual realm never before attempted. For Dante is the man who visits hell, purgatory, and heaven, and yet manages to keep himself bound to this earth. Dante's divine comedy seems to present us with the intersection of time and eternity, all the while keeping our feet firmly planted on the ground. Each chapter of Mysteries of the Middle Ages opens another door to this strange but exciting medieval world. And through these doors, we come in intimate contact with people who lived eight centuries ago. We share their hopes and terrors, their sorrows, their joys, their jokes. We ride with Chaucer's pilgrims from London to Canterbury. We make music with the nuns of Bingham. We plot with Queen Eleanor. We set up the first scientific lab at Oxford with Roger Bacon. We have visions with Francis of Assisi. We roam through medieval Paris with the doomed lovers, Abelard and Eloise. All in all, we have a wonderful time.